Be inspired on Liberty Radio. working in the food bank here for a year and a half. It is very rewarding. We're seeing people benefit, you know, people who are struggling, they can come to the food bank every Saturday. They were really welcoming and they have like a range of like fresh meats and uh, sort of healthy options. I believe they're trying to impart hope to people and um, they also, you know, seek to show love to the people, practical ways, you know. I know a lot of people have come and got support from people, whether it be emotionally or, you know, materially. So, you know, I know, I know the heart's in the right place and um, that's good enough for me. I think it, it, it benefits in numerous ways because it, it's, um, it's not just a, a pick up and go sort of mentality here. So no one here that I speak to, it, amongst any of my friends, has a bad word to say about this. It's always, the staff always respectful. It's very, very clean. Working in the food bank, we, you know, have to make sure that we're meeting our due diligence, you know, that we are following protocol and making sure that we're keeping food safe so we can actually deliver food of the best quality in the best way to the community. I've had problems with my benefits, basically. I was homeless for numerous years. I had a, had a serious accident. In between trying to get my benefits in order, there were these long gaps where I was in between getting any money. But this is uh, something that you don't need a red ticket, you know, where you can only use it once in a month or twice in a month or, or whatever it is. Here is, if you're in need, you can access it. Good evening and welcome to Be Inspired. Let's start the week together in faith. My friend, if we don't live by faith, we fail. <laughs> Everything we do has to be by faith. Whether you are new in the church or you've been in the church for 20, 30 years, if it's not by faith, we sink, we fail. But when we act our faith, everything is possible. You saw there a little bit of the work we do with the food bank of our church. And I've got some great news for you. You who are from the Woolwich area, we are starting, I believe this Saturday, if my memory doesn't fail me, this Saturday, we are starting the food bank in our church in Woolwich. That's right, one more food bank opened. Uh, the door of the church was already opened, but now we're gonna be able to provide physical help to people as well as the spiritual help that we already provide. We're going to speak today about how God speaks to us. Yesterday in the service, I was talking about this, and I want to show you something that I believe will clarify a lot of doubts for many people. You will understand how God speaks to us today. First of all, let's watch this testimony, Sinead's testimony, and we'll come back in just a moment to talk about how God speaks to us now. Faith has been vital, but the most important thing I would say was using, learning how to use my faith has helped me a lot. Learning how to use my faith and use the weapons of faith is what has kind of changed my life and helped me to move forward. Today, I never expected how my life is. My life is moving forward, I'm in a good job and I'm progressing there, I'm ahead for where my age is. And I'm able, more importantly, to help other young people who went through issues that I went through today. I'm saying this to you now because what I used to be and how I was before was completely different. I was somebody who was depressed, very sad, lonely. I didn't really have much relationship with my parents, even though I lived with my mom. We were like strangers to each other. We didn't spend any time, our relationship was very bad, toxic. I was a bad example to my family, aggressive. I was addicted as well. Inside. I 
I was very bitter, insecure. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe that I could move forward. I was somebody who was very close, confused about where my head was at, where my sexuality was. And I didn't believe in myself or have any confidence. The way I found out about the Universe Church, I'll never forget, we was actually um, evangelized by an assistant, my mom and I, and that's how we, I found out about the church. And in regards to what it means to me, it means to me hope. That's what I would say in one word because it's where I found my hope and where I found purpose for life today. I would say what it means to be universal is to be accepting. We include everybody. And I'd say more importantly, to give people an opportunity because sometimes people have given up on life, but for them to know that there's opportunity, there is hope. I was learning bit by bit how to use my faith and especially my individual faith, not relying on other people. So whether it be like praying, reading the Bible, whatever it means, for example, especially in order to receive the Holy Spirit, I had to learn to use my own faith. I had to believe because sometimes that could be a hard thing to believe in using your faith. Like, can I actually achieve something great? And it came to me just literally investing in my faith, learning about God for myself, investing in my relationship with God. When I saw that the biggest changes with myself was within like nine, seven months when I realized that I kind of had changed. There were certain things that I was doing before that I stopped doing that I never thought I could overcome addictions. So then I started to see like slowly and surely by using my faith, things were moving forward. Today, I'm able to help others, something I wasn't able to do before because I was somebody who needed the help, to be very honest with you. And today, I'm able to help others, speak to other young people, those in my church, I help out with different groups, the youth group, the food bank, CBC, and just like helping people to understand that you can change your life and it's literally down to you making a decision. Because I received the most important thing, I was able to now give to others. The main changes and the things that I would say I conquered was that I'm able now to say I'm free from depression. I sleep well. I'm not somebody who's sad all the time. Or down. I'm not someone who's insecure, while once I was before, I'm someone who believes in themselves. I'm now somebody who like has a future, like knows where I'm going, is not someone who's just like, just there, but has a vision, believes in themselves, knows where they're heading. There's definitely no regrets about becoming part of the Universal Church because it's really helped me a lot and I wouldn't be who I am today without it. Modern technology has allowed for ease and flexibility in accessing and receiving information. Gone are the days when information was received after many months, weeks, or at the very least, days. Is this a good thing in general? Or are there negatives to this modern day convenience? I think this is a good thing. In a more globalized world that we are now where freedom of movement and um, the ability to fly anywhere within a day means that people have moved around all over the place, whether it's for economic reasons or relationships, romance, whatever it is. Um, I think it's a good thing because it can keep you in touch with people from all around the world. And especially if people are really far away, you can talk to them. I think it's a good and a bad thing. Technology is, well, I think it's here for the um, advancement of humans, obviously. But on the bad side, we can obviously see it being used for selfish reasons. It's good in terms of uh, communication, like uh, no matter what the distance is, I myself live in London, but my family is in Japan. So I can text them, I can say hi, uh, video call with them instantaneously. Allowing it doesn't work half the time, I can't see how it can be that good. Sometimes it goes through quickly, another time it switches you back to your basic page and you have to go through it all again to try and get through. That is not quick. I can pick a phone up and call somebody quicker. Do you think you are negatively or positively affected by technology? I'll say for the most part negatively, I feel like before I had all of this technology, life was good, man. As we've grown older, I needed to like depend on, on this a lot more. I would say if you were counting kind of overall, that I would say positively. You can choose basically to make your interactions with technology more positive or more negative, depending on your needs. Yeah, I think social media has so many positives, but it's just about having the right space and boundaries in place. Limiting the amount of use that I use each day and maybe also not always looking at negative things first thing in the morning. How would you cope with not having access to technology anymore? Same as I had before we had it. If I go on holiday, I don't watch the television. Right? I don't run around looking for the nearest place to uh, update myself with the news of what's going on in London. We didn't have that technology. There were no mobile phones. If you wanted to use a phone, you went to a phone box. You know, what's happened? What's wrong with writing somebody a letter? You, co you couldn't live in the modern world without it. We've, it's been made indispensable. All of my work and business opportunities come through emails um, or phone calls. Life would be 
something completely incomprehensible to anyone who's been around for the last 50, 60 years. I think not having Google Maps would be the worst because I just get lost all the time. I used to always have to just ask people. A lot more time would be taken up because I think technology saves so much time. It just makes our life much more convenient. For so, for example, we don't carry much cash anymore. As long as you have it, you have access to most things via mobile phone. You're free from other physical materials. We are responsible for the way we use or are affected by technology nowadays. Just like we were able to receive good and bad news and messages from our loved ones in an instant, a spiritual message to boost our faith should also be available at our fingertips. Decide to be connected to what can feed your faith and keep you connected with God. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube to receive messages of faith and encouragement. Download our Liberty Radio app from your app store or tune into our daily inspirational programs on libertyradio.co.uk. What is goodness? In the dictionary, the word goodness is defined as the quality of being good or virtuous. It refers to the qualities of character or conduct that allow the possessor to be held with approval or high esteem. In the Bible, the Lord Jesus said in response to the rich young ruler, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. Goodness is attributed as a character of God, as he alone is inherently good and merciful. Goodness is both a divine attribute and a guiding principle for believers to live by. It's the essence of moral excellence and virtuous conduct and is deeply rooted in the Christian faith. The Bible says in Galatians 6, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all. Goodness, therefore, works for the benefit of others and not necessarily for oneself. However, in this fallible and broken world, is it possible to find anyone that is good? Despite our best efforts, it's important to acknowledge that our way of being is primarily selfish in nature. The concept of goodness challenges us to look beyond our own self-interests and consider the well-being of others, whether through small acts of kindness and generosity, to cultivating virtues like empathy and integrity. Acts of goodness allow us to contribute to the good of humanity as a whole. Nonetheless, these acts of goodness cannot exist indefinitely and independently outside the nature of God. This is the reason why goodness is a virtue from the Holy Spirit. He enables us to push past our own will, if indeed we are willing, and surrender wholly to His will for us. Without the Holy Spirit, the human effort at goodness is but a candle flame. It will eventually burn out. You know, God today, He speaks to those who have ears to listen. The Bible says the Lord Jesus spoke in uh, the book of Revelation. Often we see there, uh, those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. But how does God speak to us today? There was no doubt that in the past, God spoke to the prophets by dreams and visions, many different ways. It's important to remember before we go to the point of how God speaks today, that God didn't give dreams just to anybody. Oh, this is, I'm giving you a dream to show you what you should have for lunch. 
or where we should move your house or what your cousin is doing or what your neighbor is doing. Because that's what a lot of people say today. A lot of Christians today say, Bishop, the Lord gave me a dream last night that my sister, my mom, my neighbor was doing witchcraft against me. Listen, this is not biblical. Remove this from your mind. This is not biblical. Why? Because God, yes, did speak in the past through dreams and visions to guide His people, the nation of Israel. So God would either give a dream to a prophet, a vision to a prophet, to a king, to guide a nation, not for the benefit of that one person. So now when a hundred, a thousand, a million people talk about this dream, someone said like this to me the other day, Ah, Bishop, I was going to move to a country. I had everything ready, the ticket bought. Then the Lord gave me a vision that I should move to another country. Why? That's not what you see in the Word of God. But here's how God speaks today. Because you know that the, the, the ultimate authority in the world is the Word of God. And look what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews. We're going to read here together. Let's read here. Hebrews 1. Let's read verse 1 and 2. God, who at various times and in various ways various ways, spoke in time past, attention, God in many ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the worlds. God today speaks through His Son. And maybe you say, wow, Bishop, this is amazing because last night the Son of God, Jesus, spoke to me in a dream. No. God speaks to His Son. How? If you read later uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, the first few verses, it says that Jesus is the Word. So when the Bible says that God today speaks to his, through His Son, He's talking about the Word of God. A lot of people don't like that, to hear that. Because do you know why many people prefer to wait for a dream than to read the Bible? Because they are lazy. Oh, Bishop, I can't believe you just said that. It's true. People, why are bookshops in this world, in this country, closing left, right, and center, because people now prefer to watch movies, TV series, and all these things without giving a chance to a book that maybe is going to help them. And if there's one book that is the Word of God, it's, it's the Bible. So when God speaks to us today, it's through His Son, through His Word. When we open the Bible, it's like God speaking to us. That's what happened to Abraham. That's why the book of Isaiah says, Look to Abraham, your father. Pastor Hugo, here from our church in, in Finsbury Park, the Cathedral of Miracles, is here with me tonight. Pastor Hugo, we can see that when God uh, tells us to look at Abraham, He's telling us that He's our example. It's not by chance that the Bible says that Abraham is the father of faith. And how did Abraham guide his life. He heard God speaking to him. And by the way, <laughs> there are people that every night God speaks to them in a dream. They are better than Abraham because God spoke to Abraham a handful of times in a matter of 20 something years. And yet, Pastor Hugo, there are people who are really special. They are better than Abraham because God speaks to them every single night in a dream. Huh? Hi Bishop, good evening and good evening to everyone. And we see Abraham as a good example and as a, a model example that we have to follow today. That uh, when we obey the voice of God, we have the guarantee of success of life and salvation. And we see, and I was even thinking, Bishop, that uh, today we see many people suffering because of this lack of understanding. Because many times people, they want to do things in their own way. They want to take decisions in their own way and they suffer. 
And we understand through this revelation that when we have ears to the Word of God and we obey, we have the certainty that everything will be well with us and salvation will come to us as well. That's right. Listen, this is the book that can totally transform lives and this is one of the books that is most neglected in people's lives. Many have this, the Word of God there in their house. If you have the Word of God, Bishop Macedo was saying yesterday in the meeting, in the morning, the Sunday morning service, that if you have the Word of God with you and you go to the Word of God, he was saying, it's like you have the map to the gold mine. This is the map to the gold mine that is called salvation. Many people are deceived even though they have the answer, the map in their hands or not in their hands but in their house, gathering dust, yet here you have all the answers to your life. Do you want God to speak to you? Leave to the side this ideas that you will have a dream, a vision one day that will change your, the direction, the course of your life. Instead, seek the guarantee. When, when you read this, you can be sure that God is speaking to you. When a person speaks, when you have a dream, there's no guarantee that that's God. In fact, most likely it's not. But here, you have the guarantee that God speaks to you. We'll be talking more about this during this week. And here from the studio, we bless you. And I, I hope that you give importance to God's Word as His voice speaking to you. We're going to leave you now with the prayer. Instead of us praying now, we're going to pray with the prayer we said there in Bristol on the altar. If you didn't have a chance to see the prayer we did there with the names of your family, we are going to do that now. And in fact, if you'd like to talk to us, if you need in this uh, bank holiday Monday that hasn't finished yet and you, perhaps it wasn't a good time, a good day for you, you want to talk to someone, you can call us 020-7686-6000 or send us a message on WhatsApp 020-7686-6010. There is a pastor available right now to speak to you. We'll leave you with a prayer there from Bristol. We'll see you back here tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hello everyone. May God bless you. As promised, we are here on the altar or what will be the altar of our church in Bristol. The structure is ready. We still have a lot to do. In fact, we're not showing you any of the building works today because we have a lot to do still. But as we were here on the altar preparing for the prayer, I remembered that Pastor Edgar, who is here with us now and who's already working here in Bristol to start the church, he will be the pastor here. And Pastor Edgar, you are a fruit of the faith of, was it your mother who prayed yes, for Bishop, you? Yes, it was. Right. So Pastor Edgar, who was someone, a young man who had problems with the police, yes, crime, Bishop. doing many wrong things, but his mother fought for him in prayer with her vows on the altar like you did. And I, I truly believe, uh, Pastor Edgar, and actually when we came here to record today, we, I didn't even remember this point of your mom fighting for you in prayer. But you are a testimony of what we're doing. Because just like your mom made vows for you and you are here today to bless people, to save souls, I believe the same thing will happen in the life, in the family of this person. We know not everyone will be on the altar. Some people will be in the court. But what we want is the family to be saved and to serve God. Exactly, Bishop. And that's why we are going to put your names, the names of your family members on this altar because we believe just as I am a fruit of what a mom, through purposes, through prayer, through determination can happen, we are sure that when your names of your family members go on this altar, the same thing is going to happen to your family member, if not today, tomorrow, in a year's time. But we are sure that every time we make a prayer on this altar, the names of your family will be lifted up to God. Yes, and that's why it's important for you to persevere. Like Pastor Edgar said, sometimes 
It takes time for that person to give their life to the Lord Jesus, but don't give up. Let's pray right now before we put the names here inside the altar that will be here permanently. Let's lift up the names of your family in prayer before they are put here on the altar. My Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we unite our faith here right now, determining that the names that will be put inside of this altar will also become, my Father, people who will be serving you on the altar, in the court. It doesn't matter. But what we want is that salvation will enter the house of this person. Salvation will enter the family of this person. Lord, like Pastor Edgar, when he was young, who was on the wrong side of the law, I know that there are many people in the same situation with children in the wrong side of the law. But just like you rescued Pastor Edgar through the vows of his mother, I pray, my Lord, let there be salvation in this person's house. Through their vows, through their vows on the altar, and now through the names of the family being here on the altar, let there be salvation in this home. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We are now going to place the names of your family here. They'll be here permanently. And I believe salvation has come to your family in the name of the Lord Jesus. May God bless you. Remain in faith and persevere. God bless you. This has been Be Inspired on Liberty Radio. If you'd like to donate in support of this work, please do so by any of the following ways. Via online banking using our details on screen. Through the QR code which will take you to the payment page on our website. Or you can gift aid your donation writing through the email address on screen. Thank you for your help.